Hi, this is Emily. Thanks for watching here at Kid Lit But Love. I'm here to talk a little bit about these four Halloween younger age creep factor old finds that I picked up on eBay. But first, really quick, if you didn't get a chance to see it or like and follow my Facebook page, Children's Literature Training Academy, check it out. I just posted a review of Holiday Inn by James Howe and The Power of Poppy Pendle. And I am telling you one of these books I loved with a passion and I tell you all about it and why but you'll have to check out that video. It's an exclusive Facebook only uh, review of these two books um, on my Facebook channel. So if you go to the Children's Literature Training Academy, like and follow, and then just a few postings down, you can find that um, video, but it is not here on my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these four books. So let's start with A Haunting in Williamsburg, because honestly, it's one of the only ones that I liked <laughs> from this lot. And I'll tell you why. And the reason I liked it wasn't even so much of the story. It's because I've been to Colonial Williamsburg and the writing in this little book really painted a very, very vivid picture of feeling like you are walking the streets of Colonial Williamsburg uh, in the 1700s or in modern day time, which still feels like you're walking in Colonial Williamsburg in the 1700s. Um, so, and this was one of those Avon Camelot books, uh, 1989, 1990. Um, by Luke Hassan. And so this book is really about a girl who middle middle age, she goes uh, stay for the summer with her aunt in Colonial Williamsburg and um, staying in this old house that's kind of, you know, kind of creepy. And these strange things start happening. Things in her room start moving around. Um, she sees a boy in Colonial clothes walking up and down around her window. And um, that her aunt says, you know, there's no child actors wearing costumes in Colonial Williamsburg, which is not true because I've seen them. <laughs> but um, so it turns out it's a ghost. Um, but um, and she starts exploring the town on her own. She, you know, she starts off by hating history, but she really becomes fascinated with it because she comes across all these clues about an unresolved case that has to do with her aunt's house and a girl from the Colonial Williamsburg era that needs her assistance doing a few things. Um, so it's a real short, easy read. And one thing I do want to point out that threw me, I've never seen before. Um, she, the girl's getting checked into her, her house. A tall regal black lady came hurrying out the front to meet them. I have never seen in a children's novel, um, an African-American person re referred to as a black person or a black lady just saying a black guy or a black lady or a black woman. So that threw me, I was like, what? I had to look at that twice. So, you know, you don't see a lot of that in classic literature. Uh, there's a little more eloquence to how it was written. You definitely don't see that in modern day children's literature. So this was kind of that era, late 80s, early 90s, where I guess it was kind of like an anything goes. So that kind of was a little just, it just struck me as distasteful. Uh, actually, I believe it happened in this book twice. Um, so I, I, I imagine this book got quite a bit of flack for that. But this is it was just a quick little uh, Haunted Williamsburg mystery, um, good for kids that are probably um, third grade and up. So, but it's probably maybe out of print. I don't know. I got it off of eBay. All right. So let's talk about um, this one very briefly, one that I absolutely did not like and do not recommend at all. This is Ghost Buddy, How to Scare the Pants Off Your Pets. It's a scholastic book and it was written by Henley, Henry Winkler. The, oh, weird. I'm getting that reflection thing. Henry Winkler um fawns from happy days which was surprising me so that's one of the reasons i picked up this book and lynn oliver um and so it was let me read this to you when billy broccoli finds out his personal ghost hoover porterhouse is failing responsibility billy decides it's his mission to help hoover turn his grade around but how then inspiration hits billy is going to get hoover a pet blah 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 it was absolutely just i love henry winkler i mean what a great actor so like what can i say here but Stick with the acting, my friend, honestly. I, I love the concept for the book. Um, I, you know, if you want, if a kid wants to read a fun, dorky, quirky, funny, not very eloquent, silly ghost-ish story, I guess they could read this book. I'm really picky about books I would let children read. Um, I lean more toward quality, you know, actual literature than just children's books or stories. Um, so it was just, so much of the book was just these two kids dialogue talking like very little happening it's literally impossible to get through and it's like the you know you think it would be the easiest book in the world so i'm not going to talk much more about that one um <laughs> let's talk about 
um, by Betty Renwright, A Ghost in the Family. This book actually was surprisingly fairly good. Not as much um, enjoyment as The Haunting of Williamsburg. It's another scholastic oldie. And um, this book actually had, let's see what year was this one? 1998, yeah, these were all from the, the 90s. Uh, this one actually had a little more like terror elements in it. I mean, it was kind of scary, you know, like there's this little boy, kind of like a Haunting in Williamsburg, like the girl in the room in an empty house, in a new house, the boy in an empty, in a new house. Like he starts hearing noises every, every night in bed, starts hearing noises that come from his closet and where things are happening. He, like one, one of the scenes he's laying in bed and he feels like um, his sheets lift up by his feet and his toothbrush starts scratching at his feet and he freaks out. I, mean, I was kind of like, I'd be freaking out if this stuff happened to me. That was kind of the feeling I was getting when I was reading this. And then eventually another night he hears more noises and he goes in there, he sees a ghost in his closet. I'm sorry, a, a, well, a ghost, yeah, but also a mummy in his closet in the back of his closet standing there, I mean, the, what I thought though was hilarious is that the kid doesn't have any like horrific or horror based reactions. It was just well, when you think about how scary that would be to a kid or even like, to, you know, to an adult, it's like, it's like, oh, interesting. There's a mummy in my closet. Well, that's it. Very scientific. You know, it was just like, I didn't have a real believable factor. Uh, it, it had some, it actually had plot elements though. And it had kind of this little, again, another little mystery to solve. There was a reason that he was being haunted. So, um, and this last book is by MD Spencer's is called Shivers Creepy Clothes. Now this book was fun. Let me read it. Ready to wear nightmare. Have you ever been sent far away from home all alone to a place you've never known where the wind wears phantom pants and very ugly ties. Well, that's just the spot Patricia and her brother Sam found themselves in one bright sunny day. It was bad enough that they had to stay in a strange city with their even stranger aunt. But when they find that dusty trunk full of old creepy clothes, they travel back in time to a tailor made time of terror. It was really fun. It was very creative. I was like highly amused in this book. You know, it was like, it was all like tra time traveling through a clothing chest to a kind of like this creepy, you know, house of horrors kind of a scenario. It was, it was really very inventive. And surprisingly, despite it being one of those really short, like, like this little girl, she wakes, the, start, the book starts when she wakes up and, and her parents have vanished and she's in this house and everything's different. And so it was, it was really kind of creepy actually for a cute little book. And I don't think this was scholastic. This was, uh, an unnotable publisher because it's not even, it doesn't even say Paradise Press. Okay. But the writing was actually kind of more um, gripping, believe it or not. Some of these older, like quick, little easy, cheapy reads are like super cheesy, but this one was written even better than Haunting in Williamsburg um, and a little more en enjoyable. And, and the writing was a little bit more like suspenseful intriguing considering the type of book Haunting in Williamsburg um, I just like that better because I like the historical context to it so um, I think kid any kid would really enjoy this book there's a little bit of mention of finding a couple of bodies and this and that in there but I would recommend out of that lot of four um, any of them except the, the the one that I just mentioned is the one that you don't want to buy all right thanks everybody for watching and keep an eye out because I'm going to be doing a review soon of this incredible book this is the scandalous sisterhood of prick willow place it's all about it's a mystery um, about boarding school girls it was a fabulous book a lot of humor in it so thanks everybody for watching and check out tuesday on my facebook page again there'll be another exclusive review and you'll have to find out when you check out my page on tuesday night